Hello and welcome to In the Light, Growing Your Soul with me, Anna Isabel. I'm a psychological astrologer as well as an analytical hypnotherapist. And I'm delighted that I have Chris Ratta with me today to talk about his book, which is called An Exploration of Trans Mediumship. Hello, Chris. Hey, Anna. Thank you very much for allowing me to come on to your wonderful show. Well, it's, um, <laughs> it's a pleasure. And I guess it would be good to start with the obvious question. What is trans mediumship? Trans mediumship is, uh, I suppose, a little bit more of a purer connection with those from spirit side of life. I suppose the best way to explain it to your listeners would be that those that are developing uh, mental mediumship, platform mediumship, one-to-one -one readings, that kind of thing, they learn to open up uh, their energy. So they learn to open up their vibration and push it out. And they allow those from spirit side of life to come down and to gently touch their life force energy, energy into our life force energy in that type of mediumship. So that we may receive information, pictures, uh, we hear things, uh, feel things through the contact that is made. With uh, trans mediumship, what actually takes place is we learn to slow everything down around the us within our own energy and allow those from spirit side of life, their life force energy, which they, when they go to heaven, they become the discarnate spirit, which means they no longer have the physical body. So we allow their energy to come and to blend into our energy and we allow our thoughts to subside to them so that they can use that part of our uh, subconscious mind, I suppose, that we really don't use to allow the communication and for them to work through us on that. So it, for me, it, it's a more purer form of mediumship. I hope that makes so, sense to you. <laughs> are we saying then that what a medium is doing when they're practicing trans mediumship is getting out of the way as much as possible yes, to, allow the, to allow the spirit energy to come through and use them as a means of communication in a more direct way. That's, in a nutshell, yes, that's really what it is. Although it takes a long time to, to develop it, but we have to learn as mediums, we have to learn to, to still our physical mind, to, to learn how to calm it through meditation, through certain exercises, and allow the spirit world to come and to take control over our sort of subconscious mind. But we're, and, we're always involved a little bit, you know, uh, through and that's, our mediumship. It, it, it's quite something because when sitting as mediums, what mm -hmm. we're often doing is acting as messengers. Which all we so are, yes. As a bridge between the spirit communicator <laughs> and whoever it is that's sitting with us. But what we're talking about is taking it a step further where the communication is much more direct because there's no interpretation being done on the part of the medium. That's correct. Indeed. When, when you look at the type of mediumship, you know, that we look at, we, we call platform mediumship is what you're doing. And don't get me wrong. That's a wonderful type of mediumship to develop it properly. It is. It, it, it is wonderful. It's a wonderful, uh, you know, type of mediumship, obviously, to be able to bring forward. But when you are, uh, you know, allowing the spirit world and that type of mediumship to come forward is you are hearing or you are seeing or the or certain things that they're giving you so that you can work work certain things out so how you can put it across to the to the re re recipient, you know, the person that you're giving the information to. But with trans mediumship, what we actually do is we allow our minds to settle so that, yes, they take control and they speak and the more sort of directly through us. So it's yeah. a little bit different, but it's the same purpose. We we are just a vessel, just like any other medium is. That's all we become as a channel and a vessel for them. In all aspects of mediumship, we are just the channel for them. And it's just a different way of doing things, that's all. It's, it's quite <clears throat> difficult because sitting um, <laughs> and allowing ourselves to receive communication from spirit requires that we set ourselves aside anyway but we're having to trust that what we're getting is not our imagination mm -hmm. and it's it's that ability then to translate what we're saying 
for some, you know, for someone else. But then what you're talking about is that trust deepening to a point where it's like we we've, we've stopped thinking. We're not analyzing, we're not, we've stopped thinking, and we're just allowing that our mouths to work on behalf of someone else. I suppose that's a lovely way to put it, but that is correct. You know, we are we are allowing the spirit world to take, you know, uh, control of our thoughts. And very often the words that come out if you're doing communication, the words that will, will come out quicker than we can think them as the spirit will take control over it. Yeah. And Do you remember the communication that's coming through it? Because I've seen many trans mediums who don't. Well, to be very truthful, I would, you know, I, I've done this for a very, very, very long time. And I would say that statement is probably not quite correct, you know, to be very truthful with you. I think what happens is sometimes mediums get a little bit confused because when the initial thought comes out or, or those on spirit side of life come to blend with you and they come to look at communication, you will hear the words at the beginning. You will always see if they come forward and say hello or they introduce themselves or whatever. You, you, will, you will hear little bits of it, okay? And then as you uh, as, as you go and you allow the communication to, to come and to flow, you know, generally what happens is you may from side to, from time to time just gently slide into the communication. So you hear it and then you gently slide back out again. Okay. But uh, even if you look back, you know, at, at, at if you look at mediums that were the pioneers of the past that had, had, you know, direct voice, independent voice, all these kind of things, you can still see that these mediums, because it's noted, because in certain circumstances, if you look like John Campbell Sloan, for instance, he was, was a wonderful little medium, but he had independent voice, but it was the spirit could speak independently within the room with the energy that was created through the, this gentleman's uh, um, uh, power that he had, obviously, for, to help the spirit world. But with this gentleman could speak, but it's noted that he would sometimes actually hold a conversation with his wife. So his wife would come forward and say, you know, and then he would speak to his wife and say, listen, I want to come home. I want to be with you in the spirit world. And his wife would say, John, you know, you know, the, you've still got work to do here. And when the time is right, you know, you will come over to this side of life and I will be waiting for you when, when, when it is your time. So even then, you could see that the spirit, that he was, his mind was drifting in because he had to be there to be able to speak to his wife or to hold that conversation that that has been written about you see so i think what happens is very often with mediums and trans mediums is that at the beginning of, a, of, of communication you are aware of certain things and then what happens is you get a, you get used to it and then you drift away so you do slide away from from the communication that's taking place but through uh you know the general uh you know how long if it's half an hour an hour or whatever you people are speaking through you is you will drift in little bits and you will drift out but the bulk of it you won't remember but very often when you know you are finished and you have obviously the spirit world has retracted themselves from you is you may remember little snippets of the communication that took place later on that that, that evening but very often what, what we're talking about is is the very very deep deep states of physical mediumship when we were talking about uh you know physical mediumship when then the mediums were obviously, you know, so to a different level, you know, so very often they can't remember what, what, what had taken place because it's a, it's a totally different thing. But I would say the majority of mediums who do speak or allow the spirit world to speak through them do remember little bits of it. I do. It's, it's not difficult to imagine, you know, this drifting in and drifting out for me because when I sit in the power, yeah. And I get images, and this is just for me, not not for someone else. But mm -hmm. if I'm sitting in the power and I have a connection with spirit, if I don't write it down <clears throat> almost immediately afterwards, actually immediately afterwards, I mm -hmm. often do forget because there is this very dreamlike quality sometimes. Whereas yeah. with when I'm sitting with with someone else and I'm I'm working and giving them the message then it's different because i'm very present there with them and because i'm having to act as a as a as the communicator um or the bridge mm -hmm. if i can put it that way yeah, but when I own, if i don't immediately write things down mm -hmm. then i'm very likely to forget very quickly afterwards indeed yeah but even that even when you talk about them you talk about sitting in the power Sitting in the power is not what you're making reference to. 
Okay, what you're making reference to there is blending with those from Spirit Side of Life. Yeah. Okay. Sitting in the power is is has no contact with the spirit world at all. Okay. When I first started my journey and I went to organizations and I had a hunger, you know, uh, to learn, and I still have a hunger today, you know, I mean, and every day is a learning day, if you understand, you know, especially with, with the spirit world. But when I first started, I went to, uh, you know, lots of lots of mediums, lots of workshops, lots of weekends, you know, I tried so much because I just wanted to find out more about the, this calling that I, I was receiving from the spirit world. And very often they would tell us at the beginning that sitting in the power was blending with your guides. And it wasn't until after a few years when I started to trust my own people, my own guides, and listen to what they were saying. And I met some other, uh, obviously, more wonderful mediums that we realized that sitting in the power was not sitting with your guide. It was sitting in the, in the, in the, you know, the vibration of life, you know, the universal energy. It was learning to sit in the peace and tranquility of yourself so that your, your own spirit could connect into the vibration and it could recharge itself. It could recharge your spiritual battery, which is in your solar plexus area. And all these things were done and through just sitting in the power with no contact with the spirit world. Okay, yeah. so sitting in the power is a totally different thing than right. them from blending. And it's interesting now because there's lots of mediums, even though when I first started, the mediums that obviously, you know, had told me at the time that sitting in the power was blending. But even them over, you know, a certain amount of time have changed their way of thinking. So what's no, the that's right. and it's um, I didn't make that clear when I was I was speaking. Uh -huh. but It's uh, if I if I start. If, if I have a longer period of time, I start by sitting in the power and then I begin to blend. And I didn't make that distinction. Right, um, okay, yeah. indeed, yeah. So indeed, that, yeah. that's absolutely right. Um, mm -hmm. Now you talk about guides. So yeah. tell us about guides. Who are they? How do we find them? I think to be very truthful, I think your, your, your guides find you, you know, as, 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 you, as you develop. You know, your guides will change with you. I mean, you may have, you know, you will have certain guides that will be with you all through your mediumship. And especially, you know, maybe before you are even conceived within your mother's womb, you may have uh, made an agreement for someone on spirit side of life that when you are reborn or you're born and, and, and into the womb, that this guide will be there, your, your guardian angel or your, your gatekeeper. So this person will be through, with you all through your life. So very often you already know that person or that person has made that agreement with you to protect you. So these guys are with you all your life, you know, uh, and they're, they're wonderful and you get to know them. You know, if you can, have the pleasure of getting to know them. But sometimes they're almost like your sixth sense, you know, they sort of, you do things or you can, uh, sometimes you hear things in, in your mind, even if you're not sort of spiritually aware, you know, like maybe like that, that second thought, if you understand, will I go right, will I go left? Oh, I'll go this way. You understand? So they're there helping you. Very often we don't realize that they're actually doing it with us. But the other guys that come around about you, uh, you know, uh, can come at different times. I mean, my main control is a gentleman called Henry, which you'll probably know him or, or your, some of your listeners might know him as uh, Harry Edwards, uh, the wonderful spiritual healer from uh, last uh, uh, century there. But he took quite some time before he came and made himself known to me. You see, but what happened is I had I had you know uh, Grey Horse, which is my was is my gatekeeper, which is really has he really his really missed two moons, but I obviously couldn't pick up the two moons at the time, so he just called me Grey Horse. It's Grey Horse, so that was fine, you know. But these uh, kind of people are there. But you know Harry or Henry, he came after a few years of developing. But what happens is you have lots of guides that come forward, or lots of spirit helpers that come into your energy. So what the spirit world do is they is very often they call it like for like, and you will hear that terminology, you know, with, with, through, through your development. And I'm sure you'll use it yourself. But what happens is the spirit world will bring certain people to you that are compatible with your energy. So where these people come and these people bring that little bit of, of quality from their energy and put it into your life force energy. And this is, is how we develop as mediums, but also they help you guide. You see, they guide us for maybe five minutes, five months, five years, 50 years if you're lucky. But we have people who come from spirit side of life all the time, different people to help you as you develop as a medium. I mean, we don't just wake up one, one morning and realize that we you know, have the ability to do lots of different things. I think what happens is it's through time when these people come and they change your chemical composition 
within your auric, within your life force energy, we develop as a medium. So as we develop, we have other guides who come into our world, like, like Henry, which was a few years after, obviously, my development and my hunger of searching, that he came in uh, and became, uh, you know, my main control. But only when the time was right and my energy was compatible and everything was in place for him to make his to, to make the announcement or to say that he was coming, if you understand. So we have lots and lots of different guys. There'll be guys round about you and helpers from spirit side of life that you'll never know they're there. You may feel their energy, but they, very often they come for just a very short period and then they just disappear back into their side of life. But you probably have, you know, within your own your own main, see, you definitely have a main control. And you'll definitely have a gatekeeper. But the other ones who come, you may be aware of them or you may not. You may have three, four, five, you may have 12, but you know, I don't know. But the job of, of a medium is to allow whoever wishes from spirit side of life, the right person to come forward to work through you. So we train ourselves to allow that to take place. And especially with trance. I mean, I know about 12 of my, of, of my own, my guides, personally, some of them. But I also know that I am in the position when I'm working that I open up and trust those that are around about me so that I have an abundance. So there's more people on spirit side of life than there is, you know, obviously on the physical world. So I just open up that door to them and know when they come, it'd be the right person that's required at that time for the information to come forward or for the healing to take place. So you've been talking a lot about guides um, for those who are developing mediumship. Mm -hmm. But obviously not everyone develops as a medium. So yeah. can you talk about guides for everyone else? Well, I think you have, uh, you know, as I say before, everyone has a gatekeeper and a gatekeeper protects you. If you understand, it looks after you. You know, when we, when we look at mediumship and we look at different, different things, you know, uh, not all people who go on to spirit side of life. I think if you are of a mischievous nature on the physical world and you go maybe to spirit side of life, then you may still have a mischievous nature. You don't obviously change overnight. So I think sometimes, you know, your guides and those ones that are appointed to you and the ones that you may never know like a gatekeeper is round about you, but they're there to, to protect you. So if something comes towards you that shouldn't be there, they have the ability to make that person move to the side or to protect you because that's the job that they have taken. So very often people who are not even following a spiritual path may not know that they have a guide that's there with them or a guardian angel, you know. And very often we talk about, you know, we talk about guardian angels and we talk about agents, but I often think that, you know, even angels are just people from spirit side of life. It's just another interpretation of what they do to help us. And I think they're everywhere. So the question that comes to mind is we hear about attachments, for instance. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. How is it possible to have, let's say, less well-intentioned spirits attaching themselves to an individual if we all have gatekeepers and protectors? Mm -hmm. Very good question. I think the way uh, that I, you know, uh, would, would look at that is once again, like I say, when people go to spirit side of life, Sometimes what happens is the people are, are maybe can be a little bit mischievous, okay? And the, probably the best uh, way to give you an example for my uh, for myself or my own experience of it would probably be the best way to do it uh, for you. And I and I know I have protectors. I know I have a doorkeeper, and I know obviously my own spirit team. But I was called uh, by a lady if I would go and have a look at uh, a restaurant that was having strange things that were taking place within it in Edinburgh. And uh, the lady did what, didn't want her husband to uh, know what was going on uh, because he was a non-believer. But what was taking place within the restaurant was lots of uh, electrical things. Everything was had been refurbished within the restaurant. And uh, certain uh, ice machines, all these kind of things kept breaking down, all these kind of things. Power surges that they couldn't explain. They'd had the circuit board changed. They'd had lots and lots of things changed. But they were constantly having problems within the restaurant. And then the final straw was when there was um, a gentleman uh, that was in the restaurant. Uh, he had went to uh, uh, the the toilet and when he was there he had become aware of what he thought was a ghost that had appeared in front of him now this gentleman wasn't 
uh, of, uh, you know, it wasn't a medium, wasn't a developing medium. He just, all of a sudden, he was aware of this figure standing alongside him that appeared within the cubicle. So the gentleman panicked and took off into the thing. And then, of course, when he opened the door, he fell over and he fell in the middle of the restaurant screaming. And, of course, that was the last straw for the lady. She couldn't understand what was going on. And the gentleman was obviously making reference that there was ghosts and things. Obviously, there was something, you know, unexplained he couldn't understand, you know. So he was quite hysterical, the man. So I went along to have a look at it. And when I was standing outside uh, the building, I could feel an energy that was quite eerie for me. You know, it was kind of making the hair stand on my arm, arm stand up, all that kind of thing. I spoke to the lady, we went inside and we went, had a look and, uh, you know, it was a lovely restaurant, had a cup of coffee with the lady. I was very much aware I could see, which was the strangest thing, but I could see a lady walking backwards and forwards. She just kept doing the same thing in this restaurant. So she's walking back and across. And then I realized what I was actually seeing was I was seeing what we call residual energy. So we weren't seeing uh, the spirit world, we were seeing a memory caught in time of someone that walked backwards and forwards all the time. And it used to be an old wash house, this restaurant. So she was going backwards and forwards, if you understand, with the, the linen sheets and stuff. And then I went down the stairs with, with uh, a friend of mine and the lady. We went down, had a look about in this restaurant. And it was lovely down the stairs. It was not what I was expecting, but it had been completely remodernized. And it was beautiful. So I had sat down with the lady. I could feel an energy within the place. And I went into an altered state, Okay. So when I went in altar state, like, I trust my people, okay, that work with me. So I allowed whatever was done to this person to come forward, to blend into my energy, not to take over me, okay, because I'm in control, not them. But I invited them to come forward and to speak through me. And what happened was the gentleman came forward and says that, that he was uh, what they call a witch, okay? And the area that, that they were in was so ominous. It was a place that they worshipped and a place, obviously, that was very well known within Edinburgh for witchcraft. Now, I didn't know that, okay? All right. So I sat, obviously, with, with, with the lady, and we brought lots of information forward. And the gentleman had said that, that you know, this was their place, and they used this to frequent, and they often came through. They opened up an energy. They arrived. They did things, and they disappeared, okay? And if, he, if they would allow him just to come and go and his people to come and go, then they would stop certain things that were taking place. But not everything that was taking place was down to them. You understand? Okay, there were certain things that they were doing, but there was other things they weren't doing. And what had happened is, the gentleman says, is they had disturbed the energy within the building. So what happened is they had went in and revamped the cellar. You see, and very often when you go into a house or whatever you do, and you start to uh, model it to your specific taste, then you are you're disturbing en energy, especially old energy. You see, so this is what had happened with the gentleman. So gentleman says everything was fine. If they would, if they would leave it, let, let them be, that everything would, would calm down for them. So anyway, we, we explained to the lady what the gentleman had said, and it stopped. It did calm down, to be, very, you know, to, to be honest with you. But when I got home, okay, everything was great. And then I became aware, I think it was the following day, I became aware of the gentleman that had come and spoke through me from the place was now standing in the corner of my bedroom. You see? And I thought, oh, you see? So then it was a, a test of wills where who was stronger, if you understand. Now, what happened was a gentleman. The gentleman didn't come. I don't think he had actually come with any sort of bad intent towards me. But what he had realized was that I could hear him. He could utilize me. He could speak through me. So I could communicate. So I was a doorway from him, for him into our world. You see? So obviously he was there for a couple of days and I obviously told the gentleman, you know, in, in, in so much words, being politely to go away. I am stronger than you. So it was a battle of wills. And eventually after a few, a few days, he disappeared, never come back. You understand? But what that gentleman do, was doing, he was trying me. You see, he was trying to see if he could have influence over me, which comes to this attachments, like you're saying, with, with general people. Now, people have to be careful what they call upon, you know, with, within this world, because, you know, a thought is a vibration. So if you put a thought out in your experiment and you're wanting to obviously invoke something, then, you know, people can, can become very much aware of it from the spirit world. They can pick things up. And especially if they think that they have or you have become mediumistic because very often what happens in your mediumship journey is we start to emanate a white light okay now that white light 
is uh, seen from, from spirit side of life. It's not seen from our side of life. And what happens, it draws the spirit people to us. So very often when you talk about attachments and that kind of thing, is what has actually happened is, is the spirit or the mischievous spirit can see that light and it's like a beacon. You see, it's like, like a lighthouse. And those people from spirit side of life think, oh, this people can hear me, feel me, sense me. So very often they're drawn to us. So very often when we talk about attachments, it's just it, it's someone from spirit side of life that maybe think they can come and have an influence over oh. us as mediums. So in your case, how did this spirit get through your gatekeepers? Because that's the question <clears throat> I, I'm interested in, is if we have gatekeepers, how yeah. do they get through? Because he still was, he still was in, in and round about my energy. You understand, but he wasn't. He wasn't able to come into blend into me. I allowed him to come and blend to my energy, because I accepted him through my gatekeeper. But when this gentleman came to my house, he didn't come and blend into my energy. But my because I was, I could feel his energy, and he knew that that I had, he had, I had the ability to allow him in if he wanted, to, if if I would accept it. So what they do is they try, it's a battle of wills to see if they can influence us. So very often, you know, people that aren't trained and they've called upon something, what happens is, I'll tell you another, a, lovely, a lovely little story. A friend of mine phoned me, uh, his daughter had uh, been getting visitations from a young man who had passed over in her school, okay? And what happened, I was in my home, I was driving my taxi one night, I finished, I was sitting in my home, I think it was my night off. And what happened was it was about maybe about two o'clock in the morning. I got a phone call from a friend who's also a taxi driver and a night shift taxi driver. And he says to me, Chris, listen, he says, my, my daughter is really, you know, really upset, kind of hysterical. He says, because, you know, there's a young man that keeps coming from spirit side of life. Now, my friend couldn't understand. He didn't know, but he obviously loved his daughter and he knew his daughter, you know, was having real problems with it. He says, could you come down? He says, of course I can. So I went down to, to uh, his house. I was sitting having a cup of coffee. Now, when I went into the home, I felt nothing, okay? And when I had the cup of coffee with the gentleman, I uh, was sitting away, and he says, is there anything here? And I says, no, there's nothing here. Understand, there's nobody here, okay? And until that person arrives from spirit or wherever they've come from, we can't pick it up because they're not here, all right? So anyway, I spoke to, uh, speaking away to the gentleman, and he was explaining certain things. That his, the, the, the young chap had, had passed over at school and his daughter and her friend thought it would be a very good idea to see if they could invoke that young man to come you see and what had happened was the young man had come but she didn't realize that she had mediumistic ability so when the young man came the young man stroked her arm and she could feel him touching you know the energy of him you know touching the arm if you understand you know but she used to freak her so what happened was all of a sudden, I was sitting at the table, and I just, it just, it comes. And being a developing medium, you understand. It's just all of a sudden you're there, you see. And I says to my friend, "Ah, someone's arrived now," you see. And just as I said that, his daughter started to scream. Okay, so she was screaming, saying, "Ah, oh, he's here, he's here." So what I did is I went through into uh, into the bedroom where the young, where the, where the daughter was, the young chap, and I could feel him. You understand, okay? So I spoke to him. And I explained to him that he now was in, in the kingdom of heaven. He belonged there, all that kind of thing. And I explained to him what had happened with the daughter. Had called, and he was actually, you know, he was he was making the daughter or the girl fearful, you see. And once I explained it to him, then he understood. You understand? And he apologized. He says he was sorry. He didn't realize. But what had happened was, is she could communicate with him. He, he could, she could hear him. He could hear her. And he couldn't hear his own family. Yeah. He wasn't yeah. there, you see. Yeah. So she had called upon him, but just being able to to help. Now people would say that's an attachment. It was an attachment, but only because the boy knew that that the girl could hear him because he couldn't understand himself. Now those people in the spirit side of life that can help him also with that. But he was drawn with the love because he couldn't understand what had happened to him. You understand? And sometimes even when we talk about. You know that there's always people there to connect with you when you pass over or go through that transition into the world of heaven. But what happens is there can be certain things that just makes you miss that contact, just that slightest thing. And once you miss that contact, 
then you are kind of lost a little bit. You're wandering, you're looking. And it takes people like what you're developing, what I'm developing, and what other mediums are developing, is to be able to communicate with that person and connect them back to where they should be instead of where they think that they should, where they are at this present time. So coming back to your story, um, the that particular spirit, it's not that he was attached to you. He was hanging out in the hope of attaching at him in so what yeah. is so it was the equivalent of somebody standing outside your house and knocking on your door persistently going constantly yeah so, but, what, so but what they also try to do anna is is something the spirit world will try to wear you down if you understand so it becomes a battle of 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 wills of, of the mind and if your mind is weak what they try to do is i'm not saying they're going to come and sit in your energy all the time but what they may try to do is they can try to influence or make you do a decision. You understand? So try to confuse you a little bit so that you feel your mind's not maybe quite your own or there's an energy around about you. And very often when this happens, there's some things people can start to feel very low. And some things these people enjoy that. You understand? Because maybe they weren't such a nice person when they were here. And that's the kind of thing that they like to do. You understand? So if that's happening, again, my question is, where are our gatekeepers? Your if gatekeepers they, are there. They're there, but how can how come? So is this this? I guess the question is: Is this only happening if we are accidentally allowing it to happen or inviting it to happen? I think that is how or it happens. I think that that's how it happens. If you invite it, or, or or you're inquisitive, if you understand. I mean, the gatekeeper can come and they can do certain things. You know, if, if the person comes or tries to get too close to you, they can push, obviously, the person back or they can hold them at a distance. But, you know, they can do these kind of things, but they don't have, you know, they're not going to take the person by the scruff of the neck and fling them out. If you understand, because that's, they're protecting you through a bubble. Right. Understand. Okay. Good. So the the next question around this, I didn't think we were going to be talking about this, but now we've got <laughs> on the subject, I'm full of questions. So can... When we are asleep, yes. Is it possible? Because we have, we do have um, many cataloged experiences of visitations of loved ones who've passed on and, and beautiful experiences uh -huh. um, in that kind of semi, semi awake, semi sleep mode. Yeah, yeah. But does that mean then? that some less pleasant experiences can happen <clears throat> as well um, in that state. Mm. I think to be very truthful with you, you know, the, the, the sleep state is, is a wonderful state, okay? And, and, and there's so much, you know, about it we truly do not understand, okay? What we do understand is that the body needs to rest, so we have to, and it's the physical body, not, not the spirit. The spirit, you know, is, is, is awake 24, 7, 3, 6, 5, you know, for, 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 for eternity. But the physical body has to rest. And this is why we, we become tired. But when we do become tired, in that state where we are drifting, you know, when, when, you, when, you, when you put your head upon the pillow and you feel so relaxed, you can feel the weight of your whole body just lifting from you. Okay, and as you as you drift over and go into the dream state, when you go into that dream state, what you're actually doing is you're connecting into the same uh, you know uh, waves as we go into the altered state of trance. Okay, so we know when once we we connect into that and we let ourselves go, it's it's the physical body and the and the physical mind has to go to sleep. Sometimes you will be just before you 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 disappear, you'll jump and all that kind of thing, and we know that is is the is is the um, uh, the part of the brain we don't use, the subconscious mind, starting to fight a little bit with, with the, the front, with the physical mind before we go to sleep. So we understand that. But what happens is when you go to sleep, you have your loved ones that come forward and they do take you. You know, you'll go have visitations. You'll go, uh, you know, meet your mother, your aunt, your father, your brothers, your sisters, whoever's in spirit side of life. And you'll go and have that wonderful time with them. Okay. You will also have guides that come uh, to you or people that educate you in the spirit because you, your spirit has a higher consciousness of its own we, we understand that we talk about the higher consciousness of our own spirit so once the physical mind settles and it goes to sleep 
then the spirit is alive. So we know the spirit comes out the body. We do lots of exercises, you know, workshops and all these things where we show people how the spirit comes out and how we can take you on journeys and all that kind of thing. If you astral travel, you know, if, if you do remote view and all these things are done through the vibration, it's not done through the physical, it's done through the spiritual, you understand, and the vibration. So when you're sleeping, we allow that to take place and, and, and we allow the guides to come forward. I mean, when I go to bed at night, I give permission to my guides to come and to work with me. Okay, now those in spirit side of life are very courteous to us, okay, when they come to look at development and and they just don't have the right to take us, if you understand. So I always give permission, okay, so that I know that everything is safe. So when we go out and, you know, and, and we go on this, on the, into this plane of existence with them, they can show us lots and lots of different things. So we are going to, you know, be educated, your, your spirit is going to be educated all these things and there is going to be lots of people around about you and you are protected you see so you know what can happen sometimes too is when we come back as the subconscious mind comes into place and some things we can have some rules some strange thoughts that's taken place and some things we can have nightmares but sometimes when we have nightmares what's actually happening is the subconscious mind is starting to come in, into the conscious mind and it starts to fight against each, each other if you understand because reality and and and, and non-reality are in within that in that moment of of, of the dream so going to going to sleep opening yourself up and allowing these things is wonderful and we don't know everything that takes place or where we go to when we sleep. Very often you will wake up sometimes and you have no recognition of where you have been or what's taken place. Sometimes you can be very tired. You can have a seven or eight, eight hour night and be exhausted. So it's always a good policy to say to the spirit world, especially how you are developing and you are a medium in your own right, is to say to them, if you take me, make sure I'm refreshed when I come back. All right? So it's always a good, good policy, you know? But we give them the opportunity to do whatever they want. And we don't know who comes and collects us or what we do. We do know our loved ones are very much present within that, that connection. If you go into that, because the energy is the same energy as sleep as it is of the vibration that allows those who to come through from the kingdom of heaven into our world. So that's what we're doing. This takes a great deal of trust. And mm -hmm. I love that the very first thing in your book is all about trust. Of course. Um, and that you give a wonderful example of how your first book came to be published. Yeah. Could you tell us that story now? Certainly, by all means. I mean, uh, firstly, I would, I would like to say, even, you know, in, in your spiritual journey, very often you'll say to people, do you trust the spirit world? And it truly is another thing to trust the spirit world. And although they are the same, they're not the same. Because very often people say, I trust. And other people say, do you really trust? And it's not until you really trust that everything opens up more for you. If you understand, they bring everything in abundance to you. And you understand that with your own development. When, when information comes and you say to the person, can you take that? And the person says, yes, I understand that. And we do, even within ourselves, we go, my God, I didn't, can you honestly take that? Because we, we, we have self-doubt within ourselves and self-doubt is a thing that I'm afraid all through your life in mediumship you will have from time to time, all right? But what had happened with myself was I had been developing with the spirit world for quite some time and sitting quite a, quite a lot with him on my own, you know, maybe, uh, you know, five, five days a week for an hour and a half a day. And then what happened was the spirit world had brought this to me that they wanted me to write the book, Okay. And I, you know, to be very truthful, I left school, you know, with no, with no qualifications. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, you know, I went to work in a family business and mm -hmm. I thought that would be the rest of my life, you see. So education really wasn't for me because I was going to do what I was going to do. Anyway, Henry says, if you write the book, it'll be published. And I said, you know, yeah, right, we'll see. Okay. And I kept putting it on the back burner. And then they would keep, every so often they would come and say, come on, you need to start this book, you know, or, you know, and they would have that influence. And the spirit world, I promise you, they really, when they bring things to you, they can really sort of play with your head a little bit. And, you know, so that the thought never sort of goes away, if you understand. And then I thought, okay, I, I will start the book. And I thought, how do I start it? You see, so what I did is I just started to write, you know, I thought, right, okay, here we go. So I started to write. So I've done everything just obviously uh, with, with pen and paper. And then it started to flow. 
Okay. And then what happened was I would write about, you know, a one, one paragraph about something, and then I would go on to something else, and then I'd go on to something else. And then sometimes I would look back and think, I can't remember writing that. You see? And then what happened was, anyway, I'd managed to put the book together to a certain thing. And then a friend of mine says, well, put it onto, uh, you know, the computer for you. She says, I'll transfer it. Because me and technology, I'm afraid, is pretty rubbish. Like, I write, you understand? I'm old school. So anyway, we managed to put it together. And then what we realized was within the manuscripts that we had written that there was a section here and then maybe like three or four pages over was the bottom of it. And they all fitted together. And I thought, how does that possibly work? Because it's on different days, different places, different things. And it took me about three months to write this book. I just, through the summer, I was just, I was so involved with it. But there was it just all slotted. Once I seen it on on the computer, it all slotted together. I thought, my goodness me, because like it was like, I mean, honestly, like five or six different pages bringing it back, and it was all there. And then I thought to myself, you know, what do I do with it now? You see, so I say to the spirit world, you know, you know, what do I do with it now? I have it, but that's this is it, all it is. And then I got in touch with her as a gentleman came to see me regarding his, his wife who had a, a condition, uh, and I can see this because it's in the book anyway, of a, um, ME. I don't know if you know that. They call it the, the yuppie disease, you know, where you can become very tired, you know. And I was working with uh, this gentleman and I was just speaking to him. And I says, obviously, I'm writing a book, uh, putting things together, but I need to get somebody to, ha to see if they could uh, proofread it for me. You see, to make sure, because, you know, for the spelling and all that kind of thing, make sure it flows. And he says to me, I, I'm a college lecturer. He says, I work, and he's very famous in the pharmaceutical world, to be honest with you. It's how we write our prescriptions in the UK, it was him that designed that. Okay. So, I mean, a lovely, lovely chap. And he says to me, let me have a look at it and I'll see what I can do for you. So uh, he started to put it together and I went up uh, quite regular to his home and we had lots of conversations with little bits in the book and he worded things, uh, you know, how it should be, obviously, how it's written properly. And I thought, fine, then we go up, we eventually got to the stage where he says, what do you want to do with it now? And I thought, mm, I don't know. And he says, I, we can, he says, we can look for a publisher and send it to a publisher. And I thought, fine. So this publisher had obviously been put, put to us and we sent it that evening on a Friday night. It was about 11 o'clock at night. And we sent it. And I remember driving home and saying to the spirit world, you know, you know, if, if you write it, it'll get published. And I thought, well, we'll see now, won't we? So I was trying the spirit world. It was a bank holiday weekend. And on uh, the Monday morning, I received, received an email from the publishers saying that it had passed the first stage. And they were now putting it out to their, their uh, independent readers. And I thought, how the hell did that come about? It's a bank holiday. Everything should be closed. But somewhere in that weekend, I had sent it on a Friday night. Someone had picked that up at the publishers and had read it. And then they had said, it's fine, you've passed the first stage. And then, of course, me being my Dalton Thomas, I says to them again, well, we'll see. Still got the rest of the week to go. And by the, by the end of the week, I had... Another email from the publishers to say that they had given me a publishing deal if, 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 if I wanted to take it. I couldn't believe it. So I obviously took it. And then, of course, it went through the process, obviously, we could get out there to the world. But I remember saying to the spirit world and saying to myself, you know, that what they had said was absolutely right. And the only thing that sort of quizzed it was me, was, was, was my self-doubt within myself, my self-doubt within the spirit world. But that was orchestrated from start to finish by the love of the spirit world to put that book together, to take it out, to help people. And that book was, is designed just like the second one is. First one's called Mediumship Within. Obviously, the second one is an exploration of trans mediumship. But what it is, it, it, it's a manual from the spirit world. And that's what they are. So they, they take away uh, the, the, the sort of mumbo jumbo. Do you understand? The things that are out there that confuse people and try to simplify mediumship as it truly should be. And the feedback I got from the book has been absolutely immense, to be very true for you. And it is a manual. And I hopefully, you know, when I am you know, went, went back home and, and, and into the kingdom of heaven, people will still hopefully maybe use that as a reference because it's definitely that both books have been written by the influence of the spirit world to help people to understand what mediumship and what the true love of the spirit really is all about.
but yeah, unbelievable. And so I am very grateful to your guides for getting you to write this book and the second one as well, the title of which is An Exploration of Trance Mediumship. Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for just letting people open up to my understanding of the spirit world. Everybody has their own journey. Everybody has a wonderful journey. And it's just been part of it. Everybody's individual. So just enjoy whatever comes to you. And thank you very much for allowing me just to be myself upon your show. If people wanted to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Well, they can get in touch with me through uh, uh, Chris Ratter, Psychic Surgeon. That's my, that's my website. Or, or they can get through uh, uh, sort of Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, which is all Chris Ratter, uh, Psychic Surgeon. Uh, Chris all, Ratter. All the, Chris, Chris Ratter, R-A-T-T-E-R. Surgeon.com. Okay, yeah. lovely. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. Um, if you would like to find out more about my own work, you can also find the link to my website as well as Chris's in the description box, as well as a link to his book. And next time, I, we're going to be looking at holistic, a holistic guide to healthy living. Until then, goodbye.